Ooh, baby, baby, a big and bold NX info dump happened this morning, this time coming from the most trusted and legit source yet. Eurogamer comes out with their info on what the NX is going to be, and they are the most reputable of any source or rumor we've seen thus far, so this could actually be Nintendo's next platform. I'm Ghost Robo, and let's talk all about it. So we've heard for a while that the NX is going to be different. A handheld and a console baked into one, a handheld and console baked into two, a hybrid of some sorts. But now we have something that seems like it could actually be what the NX really is. Eurogamer came out this morning with a big and bold article stating that the NX is in fact a hybrid that focuses more on handheld than home console. Now, at first blush, this may be massively off-putting and disappointing, but hear it out and see what you think when all is said and done. So, the NX, according to Eurogamer, is a handheld with two detachable controllers that bookend the screen. That screen or brain of the NX then can go inside of a docking station at home and connect to display on the TV. So rather than being a home console that has something detachable to take with you, it's more like a handheld, a high-powered handheld, that can then detach and stick into a base station to stream or display to your television. This would also go in line with plenty of rumors uh, that have shown cartridge-based gaming to be on the come-up for Nintendo. Uh, it was in some of the trademark and filings for Zelda uh, Breath of the Wild, and this Eurogamer article says that most Nintendo games for the NX will be on 32 gig cartridges. Now, that is a small size considering uh, the disc uh, space usage of most modern day AAA games, but apparently they're not going for graphical parity, they're instead going for wide mass appeal, uh, and the ability uh, to have these games that can play equally at home or on the go. So it uses a uh, NVIDIA Tegra processor. Not sure so far if it's the Tegra 1 or if that's just a placeholder for the Tegra 2, um, but they're placing it somewhere between a Wii U and Xbox One. So, for those of you that were expecting or hoping or really wishing Nintendo would get back into the game with a super strong console, it seems like that is not the case. And for me, that's kind of a bummer. I was hoping they'd go all in, guns blazing, uh, with a graphical powerhouse and really try and compete with the PlayStation 4 Neo and the Xbox One Scorpio. But maybe they have taken another and, and maybe even more ideal path for the company. Handheld gaming has always been their strength, and it is a sector of the market that they can dominate and have for years. The Vita, while having plenty of awesome indie and interesting titles, ends up selling barely anything. The 3DS, however, was very, very, very successful. The DS before it, even more so. Mobile gaming is at a high right now. Pokemon Go has plasterized the entire planet. So does this end up putting Nintendo in a perfect position? Giving a console uh, that can go on, you know, with you wherever you are and play on the TV while providing graphics that are higher than anything we've seen from a mobile or handheld device before it and still staying in line, for the most part, with today's home consoles, that could be a really winning formula. Imagine playing Zelda Breath on the wild, of the Wild at home, needing to go somewhere or just wanting to take it to a different room, wanting to take it on the go, and boom. You grab the console, uh, you grab the handheld, you pop on the two controllers, and you've got what you need. Now, all we've seen is a uh, patent-type uh, document showing off what this could be um, controller-wise. I don't know how accurate this is. Usually these things are very basic. Uh, I don't think they're just going to have two controllers that one has an analog stick and a D-pad, one has an analog stick and buttons, and those break off. Uh, but they also are looking to have on-the-go, anywhere-you-want local multiplayer be a, a thing. And all of this falls in line with what Yves Guimont had said, uh, Ubisoft CEO, talking about how this console is really unique, really great, and going to really bring back a lot of casual players and expand the marketplace. Um, this would also be a great way for them to reintegrate third parties, because now they're not asking third parties to just port their same games uh, to a system that will most likely sell less than the already established Xbox One and PlayStation 4, but instead target a new audience tackle a potentially much larger market and really bake into that Nintendo handheld ecosystem that is so 
vibrant and successful even to this day. Now, granted, 3DS has kind of petered off, but perhaps a resurgence can be had with a stronger and more graphically beautiful console. We've seen what Breath of the Wild looks on looks like on the Wii U. Inevitably, it will look just as good or better on the NX. They're saying the power is between Wii U and Xbox One, so it has to look better. Maybe the reason they didn't show it on NX at E3 is because it doesn't look that much better, but if you can take it on the go without any issue, cartridge-based gaming, that could be super sweet. We're looking at very fast load times, very mobile and easy storage, and uh, the option for digital as well. Apparently, Nintendo at one point was considering an all-digital console and instead decided to go the cartridge-based route. But from a multiplayer standpoint, bringing these games wherever you want, imagine the uh, supposed Splatoon remaster for NX. Now you can take Splatoon and play head-to-head wherever. Now you can take Splatoon and play both of you with the gamepad-style controls in the same room, on the same, uh, theoretically, TV at the same time. So this could be super, super cool uh, from a an interaction multiplayer standpoint. Or maybe there's something with the detachable controllers where one handheld unit can detach the controllers and you can play local multiplayer right there on the screen. For simpler games like maybe Super Mario Bros. NX, perhaps you can detach the two controllers and have co-op action right there from your little tablet. We see a stand, uh, so this is sort of, again, really representing more of an iPad type device and that has been rumored before we had all of the stuff about oh a super powered console that's going to blow people out of the water and sort of do both the handheld and home console thing at the same time it was leaning and looking more like a tablet based device and and it seems like that's what they've gone for and again initially I'm super sad. I want them to set the industry standard. I want them to not be the laughing stock of any Twitter conversation. I want them to really succeed. But when you think about it, maybe this is the way they do succeed. Maybe this is a way they gain great market share while still having great games. With that kind of power and with the dedication to games and not gimmick, they can create a fantastic library of really freaking awesome games. You got Zelda Breath of the Wild, Luigi's Mansion 2, Pikmin 4, Splatoon Remastered, eventually Splatoon 2, a new Mario. These games aren't going to require motion control. They aren't going to require any weird sort of Wiimote whacking and wrist straps. They're going to be great games with good graphical power and the ability to take them anywhere, show your friends. Remember, this also is a great marketing tool. People now can carry this anywhere they go. Imagine the power of seeing five people on the train or in your classroom or at your office playing Zelda, Zelda Breath of the Wild during their lunch break. Right now, Pokemon Go is showcasing the strength of that kind of of an idea. You see people playing Pokemon Go, you're more inclined to want to play. You want to be a part of the conversation. You want to be a part of the interaction. You want to be a part of that entire fun and sort of hype that is, is, is going on. Now, Pokemon Go obviously won't last forever. That's a very simplistic game, but take things like Mario, Splatoon, Breath of the Wild, and we're looking at a really inclusive and almost kind of going back in the past to that playground mentality where you and your friends get to enjoy games together however you see fit. We're no longer limited by the big boxes and the big TVs and the HDMI cables and all of that. If they go again with a free uh, online system, perhaps this really is like the best scenario for Nintendo. They're able to make their games, they're able to be successful, they're able to grab third-party attention, and they're able to really send this out to so many people and sell at a price point that is appealing to owners of the current PS4, Xbox One consoles. You know, maybe Nintendo looked and said, look, Xbox One and PS4 are already killing it. They're going to come out with the Neo, PSVR, Xbox One, Scorpio, all of this high-powered tech, and there's no way sitting in third place currently we are going to overtake that. The Wii was a failure. The Wii was a flash in the pan, a big, big flash, but that seems to have, have lost all of its, all of its uh, you know, love in the industry at this point. Nobody really wants motion control anymore. Connect kind of was a, a massive failure. Wii U didn't sell anywhere near what they thought. And mobile gaming is everything right now. So if we can't join them to beat them, let's do what we have done best in the past and really analyze the market and insert our tendrils there and bring our quality and our characters to that market space while still providing 
the most polished experience you could possibly get from a handheld. This is going to be way better than the 3DS, way better than the Vita, way better than whatever iPhone and iPad or Android can provide. So you're looking at the most high-powered mobile platform, hopefully at a price point that sits around 200 250 I think 200 250 220 wherever they end up going, that gets you in below the PS4, below the Xbox One, surely below the Neo and the Scorpio, and still at a price point that is appealing to parents or people who don't want to uh, sign up for a cell phone contract, don't want to fork over for that iPhone, don't want to pay data. In theory, this wouldn't have data. This will just operate on Wi-Fi. Maybe there will be LTE-based models that can tap into networks, but probably not. I don't see Nintendo going that route. Uh, but if it has ad hoc multiplayer, if it has Wi-Fi integration, if it has that local same screen detach the controller gameplay, maybe it doesn't even need that data stream. And, you know, they can do anything with accessories. You can plug into a more Wii U-like clamshell. You can have detachable Wiimote-style controllers. You could even have customizable controllers and shells based on the level of gamer, how much of a controller they want. And knowing Nintendo and their, their past with game consoles, home consoles, and handhelds, you're going to be getting a much more... Uh, ergonomic and exceptional experience than some of those attachables you see for iPhone and Android devices. Now, again, what games they have, what they look like, and what the price point, to me, seem like the three most critical places uh, that Nintendo can either amazingly succeed or err incredibly. Uh, there is a lot of hype around this. 106 pages so far this morning in NeoGAF, which is insane. Um, they're saying that it's going to be revealed in full in September. That's a pretty, uh, you know, that's soon. That's a month and a couple days away. So we should be seeing the results of this soon. But for better or worse, like it or not, I'm heavily leaning towards believing this to be reality. A true hybrid, it looks like that is what Nintendo has gone with. And instead of doing home console as the emphasis and handheld as the piggyback, it looks like handheld is going to bear the weight this time for Nintendo which the more I look at all the details, the more I think about where we are in the gaming industry, I think this might be their best move. It won't have backwards compatibility because obviously this is a totally brand new uh, sort of ideology and system and even uh, media with the cartridges. Uh, but that's okay. The Wii U didn't really have that big of an audience to draw in anyways, and it looks like they'll be re-releasing a lot of the top titles. The other thing this does is allow Nintendo to carve out their own space dominate and succeed at their own game and not feel like they have to play sort of the the unique guy or the odd man out or the third option or the, the, the plus one to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. They can be an addition to those already existing consoles or they can be an alternative or they can be something completely different uh, and that's kind of where this sits in, in sort of this unique space that may be open just for them. And maybe that's a magical fit for Nintendo and where they can focus on game development and great player experience and not worry about the graphical parity and all the fancy gadgets that PS4 and Xbox One will be releasing. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Super curious to know what you guys think of this. I am excited regardless. A new console, a brand new idea from Nintendo, new Zelda, new Mario, new Pikmin, new games, and an unveiling soon? That sounds super great to me, so sign me up. Until next time, guys and girls, hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was informative. Links to all the articles uh, and sourcing in the description below. Hit that thumbs up button if you had fun today and you're pumped for NX. Until next time, though, drink some hot chocolate. I love you, and we'll see you all later.